This video is for section 11.2, Infants for Relationships, and here we're going to take a look at chi-square tests involving two-way tables. These are different than our goodness of fit tests, where they only dealt with one distribution, one column of data. Here we're going to have a two-way table where we take multiple distributions and try to compare them. Let's dive right into the example in our notes. Here we're given an example of a survey about increased drilling for oil and natural gas offshore in U.S. waters, whether people favor or oppose it. And note that the data is given to us in a two-way table, data from two different years, 2008, 2010, and we would like to compare the distributions. So we have two independent random samples from 2008 and 2010, and we want to assess differences in distributions from several populations, we use a chi-squared test of homogeneity. And homogeneity just means sameness. So we want to see if 2008 and 2010, if the opinions were the same or if they differed in some way. What's being tested in a chi-squared test of homogeneity? Well, the null and the alternate hypothesis in general will look like this. The null hypothesis is that there's no difference in the distributions of categorical variables for several populations, here, the two different years. The alternate hypothesis is that there is a difference in the distributions in at least one of the categories. So if one of the categories differs in some way, we will say that distributions are different from each other. Let's dive right into the chi-squared statistic for two-way tables. Well, what's neat here is that the chi-squared statistic is computed the same exact way it was computed in a chi-squared goodness of fit test. We'll take observed values, subtract them from expected values, square that, and divide by the expected. So the computations will be very similar to the goodness of fit test. The number of degrees of freedom will change, though, since we have a two-way table. You take the number of rows, subtract one, the number of columns, subtract one, and we'll multiply those. So here we have two rows, subtract one will be one. We have four columns, subtract one is three, one times three is three, so we will have three degrees of freedom when we do this test. What is going to be a little bit different are the expected counts. It's a little tricky, but not all that tricky. We do need to add up all our rows and columns and get the totals here. Notice that 500 people were surveyed in 2008, also in 2010, and we also have the column totals. We have a total of 1,000 people. In this example, we had 500 people in each year. It's not necessary that those be equal to each other, but it does make it somewhat convenient here when we do the computations. All right, so here's how we do the expected counts. The expected count for any cell in a two-way table, when the null hypothesis is true, is given by. You take the row total times the column total, divided by the, the table total, the grand total. So let's put this into action. So here's my ex expected count table. So let's focus in on that strongly favor in 2010, the, the cell in the top left here. I'm going to take the column total, which is 355, multiply it by the row total, which is 500, and divide it by the grand total, which is 1,000. That comes out as 177.5. So I have eight different cells here that I need expected counts for, and I'll leave the task to you to fill these all out. But you'll notice that for each of them, we take the row total times the ta uh, column total and divide it by the table total. So I have all eight listed here. And one thing you should see is because 2008 and 2010 had the same number of people surveyed, 500, the expected counts for each year are the same. This is what we would expect to occur, to occur if the attitudes towards offshore drilling were the same in each year. Okay? And then we're going to add those up. We're going to add up all the observes minus the expected squares divided by the expected. It is eight different cells, eight different computations we would have to do. I'll leave those computations to you, but we will find out through technology eventually that our chi-squared statistic here is 47.881. So down the road, we will use calculators and technology to do this. So the chi-squared test for two-way tables. Here's the nuts and bolts of the test. Well, the good news is that the conditions are very similar to those for goodness of fit test. We're going to need random samples here. We won't be able to have any small groups. We want all the expected counts to be greater than or equal to 5. And we'll need independence in a couple of places here. And I'll explain that as we go through the test. So let's just dive right into the test here. The chi-squared test for homogeneity. Our null hypothesis is that attitudes on, on drilling are the same in 2008 and 2010. And the alternate hypothesis is somehow attitudes are different, that at least one of the proportions in the columns has differed. The data from each year are random samples of adults, random sample from 2008, random sample from 2010. The individual observations for each year independent, meaning we had large populations, 
and the data from each of the two years are independent. So we have independent random samples drawn from large populations. And also we verified earlier that the expected counts are all at least five. So those conditions are all met. And now we're just gonna dive into the nuts and bolts of the test here. We'll use alpha a 5% level. We're gonna carry out the test now. The chi-squared statistic is 47.881. Degrees of freedom is three. Remember rows minus, rows minus one times columns minus one equals three. And that gives you a p-value of essentially zero. And again, we'll use textbook tables and technology to do this. You can verify both ways that we get a p-value of approximately zero. So what does this mean? Since our p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternate, and we conclude that attitudes towards offshore drilling are different from 2008 to 2010. And if we want to dig deeper, if you take a look at that strongly favor column, people are less likely to strongly favor drilling. Notice how it changed from 225 to 130. So we could do that analysis as a follow-up. Okay. So a chi-squared test for a two-way table here for homogeneity is not much different than the goodness to fit test, just the mechanics are slightly different when we talk about the expected counts. Now here's a preview of a next type of problem. We have another two-way table here, but notice how these, this data was collected. Here we have four different television networks and political leanings of people who watch the nightly news. So some people watch ABC, some watch NBC, people self-identify as to whether they're liberal, moderate, or conservative, the data here was slightly different. Instead of having two independent random samples, we have one random sample. We asked many people the same question, and they were asked to put themselves into two categorical variables. So what we're going to do here is we want to know our TV news network preference and political affiliation independent of each other. We'd like to know if the political um, affiliations are independent of the network people watch. And here, we will be doing a chi-squared test for independence. So there's two different tests you can do for chi-squared uh, two-way tables. Independence, homogeneity, we're going to have to compare and contrast the differences. Here, there's just one random sample as opposed to two random samples earlier. So chi-squared tests for two-way tables, not much different than what we had for homogeneity.